nasikia uchungu sana uchungu sana kuingia hiyo kidole kidole ya RVG utote yangu nasikia uchungu sana siwezi kulala siwezi kulala mifikirio ya watoto i really feel pain because to get an idea is my just right even if i did a mistake it's just my right to get an idea I, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. Anything that I want here in, in Garissa, I cannot do unless I use the idea of someone else. Degree, I have diploma, I have all certificates, I have a sympathy card. I have a billion ID, I have a restless. Every gate, it's ID. Every gate you enter, it's ID. Right now, if I tell you that I'm waiting two years on ID, it is very difficult to understand. I cannot travel fast and foremost to, to go to anywhere. Even my mother right now, even if she died right, right now, I cannot do it. If you cannot even change your surroundings, you cannot change maybe the area where you are, it's a problem. And you feel like that person is already in a prison. We are talking of complete shutdown of life for close to two, three generations, young men and women who cannot project their next step. You can imagine men and women who have all the time have the knowledge, have the connections, but they can't put that into, into, into use. Sometimes you say, why, why, am I, why am I in Kenya if I don't, I don't have an ID card? If you cannot, you cannot pass the bridge, you cannot do anything. Eh? You are in a jail uh, which is open up. I was a refugee. I was a refugee, I was a refugee. I was a refugee. I was a refugee. Chakula baka yake ndio na watoto wa watanyimbo. Ajui bali ngini, anajua Kenya tu. If you could have seen what is inside my heart, haki ungenihurumia na ungeniambia pole. Ningependa kupata tu idea yangu. No other things that I want. It's only that idea. Many people enjoy freedom of movement and association as enshrined in the Kenyan constitution. They can walk around freely and travel to most parts of the Republic without restrictions, unless you are double registered and living like a foreigner in your own country. The massive drought of the 1990s sent many people from northeastern region into refugee camps in Dadaab in search of survival and a better life. Their details were biometrically captured and stored in the UNHCR refugee database. 25-year-old Abdi Rahman Mohammed only went to seek medical services. After 22 or 10, when I completed primary level, my father died. When it all of, uh, I have a uh, Problem with a medical problem, and I just went to BGH Garza Hospital, and they told me come after one month to see the doctor that will operate you. After that, uh, one of my brother talked to one of the doctors in refugee camp before, and he communicated and he told that uh, come uh, send the boy for tomorrow. And I went there for just for operation, a minor operation. After I completed, before I came back, I just uh, take uh, the ratio card from the refugee camp. To confuse for some of my colleagues who are there that you can go somewhere else or maybe you can get a free education so just come here and i just joined them 20 all of that's when i walk from two he's not alone a brief visit to the camp in early 2000s has turned into a nightmare for 26 year old sahal abdi rahman when i was just eight years old my uncle who was living there in the camps especially hakadera has gave us that report of that this is a free learning of Islamic education, madrasa and the like. So my uncle called me there, I went there, and then I started learning the madrasa Quranic. People who are living in the, card, in the, in the camps, they, they use the ration card that provided by the UNHCR. So if maybe another member joined the family, he will be added to the 
to the family members, therefore to increase the ration card. So that's why I, I went to the system of the UNHCR through the ration card of my uncle. So my fingerprint has been captured that time, uh, but I think later when I somehow grew up. For Halima Abdullahi, a mother of seven, her family is torn. Some of her children were born inside the refugee camps and their birth certificates indicate as such. And despite being vetted and issued with verification documents, it's been a long wait for recognition. The Kenyan Interior Ministry vetted thousands of people and promised to deregister all persons registered as refugees. It's been a long wait for people like Masood Farah, a taxi driver living with disability. I went uh, in Hagadera refugee camp in 2009, where I went with relatives. There was just a lot of drought, a lot of disasters. They took me with their racial card. That's how my fingers went to the, to the UN, UN database. Uh, the first time I have known that I'm in the refugee database, it was 2018 when I was finishing my high school. I did my ID vetting, uh, but suddenly I was told that you are in the refugee database, but you will not get an ID card. You know, I feel bad that my parents, both of them have an ID card, birth certificate, passport, and me, who I have born here in Kenya, I don't have. Mzee Dawood Adan knows this too well. A former government employee, some of his own children were registered by UNHCR as refugees when they went into the camps in search of food. Watoto wakiona chakula wanikimbia. Hata mimi bado kuingia kidole yangu bado ungisha huko. Ukafu siku hiyo. Iko ukafu mingi sana. UN ndio naleta hapo kwa bali sisi tunakaa. Analeta chakula. Watu wanaingia. Siku hata wewe kulisu wa kibande. Nabewa chakula. Na ndiko ajini yao. Ndio waliingia namna hiyo. Kama mimi nilijua watoto yangu wanaweza kufungika hapo siwezi kubali. Lakini hata watoto hajui na mimi sijui. Tumeona chakula tu, faida ya chakula. Mimi nilisikia mbaya kabisa. Mbaya kabisa kwa sababu wana haki ya kufukua mtembelifu. Kama mimi. Eh, watoto hawezi bata kazi. Awezi, hata hata isguli kama nasoma, awezi awezi bata, iko wengine wanasoma. Lakini awezi bata kazi mnasoma na mna gani? We talking of livelihood that cannot be achieved. We talking of basic human rights that cannot be achieved by by the victims and their and their dependents. We talking of um, lack of movement. People cannot move the, the the right to be able to move from one place to the other is is, is curtailed. So we, we are losing labor in the market. We are losing resources in the market. We are losing, um, we are losing lives. We are talking of more than 40% of, of the victims who are parents. So we are, we are talking of uh, an average of five children in a, in a household. So you can do 40% of the five households. You can, you can imagine the, the numbers we are talking of. We are talking of people can't access Health care. Why? Simply because of, of, of the movement. We were told, even COVID, you can't access COVID vaccine because of, you need identification. The government of Kenya acknowledges the situation at hand, saying people around the region had no alternative but to survive. Because of the meager resource for, for the local community, the local community felt it wise, few of them, to go and venture into refugee affairs there, so that they can get ration previously, that is. That is why they went into the UN data. A case in point is now the current scenario where there's a lot of drought, there's no food, there's no stipend, there's nothing. But you see, next door here, people are given ration. They are comfortable. But because they have already entered into the UN data and the finger is showing that they are refugee, the ID cannot help them. 
Locals say the United Nations offered refugees better living conditions at their expense and they feel left out by the government. Refugees, what am I? Okay, and I hook up. Unless on a Maduka and buy Villa Vanaka, eh? Matajiri. This is to an issue, Maskit, and a Hagadera, and a Ifo, and a Dagahali. Upande wa Biashara, Upande wa Mifugo, Wow, and Totajiri Sasa. Masisi, to make one maskin. Utaona, Ngamia, Mutu, Rivigi, and buy a corner, Mombe, Miamoja, Miatatu. Ngamia, Hamsin, Ishirin. Miamoja. Na sisi hatuna. Sasa yetu yote imekusha. Kwa vile sisi tunakwenda kuuza ngombe yetu na ngamia yetu. Lakini wao wanaleta tu lakini wanatumia chakula bure. Si unaona? Chakula wanakula chakula ya UN. Lakini sisi chakula yetu ni nini? Hatuna shamba. Ni hiyo ngombe na mbuzi na ngamia yetu. Sasa ukitoa leo moja Kesho tena utaendelea hivyo pale ngine drought iko. So tumekuwa maskini. Sasa ukienda kwa refugee camps area hiyo kuna 10,000 ya danke tu pekake. Danke pekate. Mbaya unaweza pata area hiyo. Ina zurura. Wanatumia danke cuts. Kwenda kukata miti tena. Hiyo miti yote ni yetu. Ile chakula wanapata kutoka huko wana uza wana nunua ngombe ngamia sasa tuna rely on them sasa tunaenda kutafuta chakula huko tunaenda kununua mbuzi hata soko yetu ya mifugo sasa iko ndani ya refugee camps because thousands of people's details appear on the UNHCR biometric refugee database they cannot get Kenyan identity cards and with it their lives are ruined. My life has been affected a lot. Without ID card, I have seen that without ID card here in Kenya, life is very hard. Yeah, you cannot do anything. You cannot open a bank account. You cannot get a job. You cannot uh, open for you either an M-Pesa. You cannot withdraw money from your line. Many things. Even, even right now, I don't have driving license. I'm just using my disability here in town. Yes, and there's a hotline too. You should put 10 and say 3 francs. Yes, and there's a As a teacher, I cannot, first of all, be employed by TAC. I am still analog. I am still with the old curriculum. Because I cannot go uh, in surface trainings uh, to learn the CBC whatsoever. If you are employed by TAC, there's health coverages, or you can register some of the insurance companies like the, what, what do you call, NHIF and the like. I cannot join that one. Now I cannot be employed and then support myself, support my family, support my, my relative and the like, because I cannot get that uh, service from the TC. If you are a teacher, you get, at the end of the month, you, you earn your things. So that one I don't have. So it is just struggling, just struggling with the private schools, uh, which pay less than TSC. Crackdowns on double registered people means many people cannot travel out of their regions. Travel is only reserved for those with government identification. The security operation targeting undocumented and people with double registration means they cannot use public service vehicles or get access to vital government services. I've been arrested by police for one night. I can't remember very well. They tell me that you bring a document and I bring, uh, and I bring the document after one day. I started my class in uh, 2015, Mount Kenya University. So from 2015, 2016 to 2017, uh, was a problem with the traveling document because I cannot travel because of ID. So every time, every now and then, uh, they will can hold you for almost uh, four hours, three hours, six hours, two hours, sometimes one hours, that you don't have an ID and you can even miss the, uh, the vehicle to travel. So after that, I decided to stop the class because I cannot continue. I don't have an original ID. And all, all my colleagues now, they have completed the class and now they are doing the internship. As you go in any direction from this town, there are checkpoints where people are identified according to maybe whether they have the passport or the ID, ID cards. I have none, none of them. When they are during Corona, 
there's a curfew from uh, 7 to 5 in the morning. Even if there's an emergency, it may happen that a family member gets sick at night and then uh, there's an emergency of maybe following the person to hospital and the like, uh, I cannot go. For double registered women like Ismaha and Mohammed, the legal status of a marriage is a source of concern owing to the lack of an identity card. Koleo saini na kama nyumbani kio, kuna kizu na shika, kuna ID, kuka kila kitu ni kulizo tu buana. Yani everything na mtegemea ye. Na shida unajua kama mtu ambaye ame, ame, ame wai jua biashara hawezi kani nyumbani. Lazima hafanyi kitu. Simu kiregista wa safari kwa mzai wana kuambia leta ID. Mpesa kujitolea unamambio leta ID na hauna ID. Sini buana tu ndo na register na kibia ID yake. Pesa iki ingia, master anajua. Iyo pesa yako ambaye na ingia ni how much. Kila kitu ukipata, lazima yeye mueleze. Cause we hauna chochoto la kuenda. Na, lakini ningependa nipate ID yangu. So secret yangu ikuwe kutu kwa angu. Because thousands have been flagged as holding refugee status, they have been locked out of civic duties such as registering to vote or getting life-saving vaccinations or even medical care. Watoto walipofika 18 years, kuja kuchukua kipande, imekua matatizo tena. Kura indelea, lakini hakuna watu, wale wijana wadogodogo wote. Hakuna mtu mbae naenda huko kutavuta kura. Kwa vile, hawana kipande. Kura ni kipande, sotio. Paka upate kipande, huwezi enda kutavuta kura. The government of Kenya acknowledges that ethnic Somali Kenyans feel disenfranchised owing to the unresolved issues of double registration. The future is somewhat bleak for those, the youth and the, the, the young ones. Because, for instance now, let's say as the government uh, has directed before, they, they will be a camp closure by next year June. Those now who are born here, they have secured birth certificate ID, uh, birth certificate of the Kenyan. They are born in, on, on the Kenyan soil. But now there's voluntary repatriation and voluntary of, of the refugees. So the disadvantage is that a child has been born in Kenya, he has studied in Kenya, but now he will be taken to a foreign land because as it is, if he's taken back to Somalia or Ethiopia, that is a foreign land to him because all he knows is Kenya. It's for this reason that a leading human rights organization, Hakina Sharia Initiative, based in Garissa town, has been working with the community to find a lasting solution. Hakina Sharia is an indigenous organization working in northern Kenya. And uh, one of the biggest problems that communities in that uh, area have been having for the longest time has been around uh, uh, citizenship rights and access to nationality documents such as IDs, uh, birth certificates, and uh, passports. And uh, this is how Hakina Sharia got involved with the whole issue of double registration, because they are the largest group uh, of Kenyans who are unable to acquire nationality documents. Hakina Sharia, this is the only human rights organization in Garissa. And uh, this is the first organization, human rights organization that our community have seen. So the first thing we did was, we didn't give them hope that tomorrow you'll get an ID card. We first built the trust by visiting them. We did a lot of outreach, we did a lot of legal aid by using our paralegals. Any information that we get from the government on the issue of 
uh, ID card in the issue of this double registration, we had to share with them. We were going to the grassroots to sit down with them, know how many people are being affected by this exercise. Visiting a community, a member, a community member who have been affected by this double registration give them at least a hope that maybe these guys, they can take your words and, reach, and take it to somewhere that he or she was unable to, to take it. When we did our legal aid, we had all, almost 200 and something uh, victims. But as we were doing the community uh, outreach, we came to realize the number is more than uh, we were imagining. Uh, that figure raised up to 500. That one did not stop our, our, our advocacy. We tried to work with those youth until whereby the Kenyan government decided to do a vetting on those who have been affected by this double registration. I can remember here in Garissa Township only, Garissa County, there were more than 15,000 who have been uh, vetted in the year 2015. That was the first vetting. The Kenya government came out and said that an estimate of 40,000 youth are being affected by this. As much as Sakin Sharia is a homegrown grassroots organization, we understand the problem these people go through much better than anybody. But that does not mean that we are working in isolation. We can't do this work uh, on our own. We need the support of the like-minded uh, officers government office, ministry, uh, and Minister of the Interior, the Registration Department is a key partner that uh, we work closely with. Um, as much as um, the problem falls within their docket, they've been a good uh, partner to work with. We can do this without their full support. Uh, other partners, we, we have other partners, non-governmental organizations that support us. So we work in, 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 in a network, in a consortium of like-minded human rights organizations from the other parts of the country to push this, uh, this process. Facing the threat of deportation after the vetting process, petitioners have sought legal redress in court. The petition was caused by um, the long delay that the government has taken in this issue. You can understand that um, six months without a national ID is a long time. It is trusting in the process of the rule of law um, that these individuals approached us and they said, um, can you kindly support us to, um, to file this matter, to be determined by the courts, therefore resolved in that way. Um, so Hakina Sharia, uh, together with three, three other double registered victims who are representative of the, of the thousands who are on the database, um, filed the case um, in the Garissa High Court um, and the matter is before the judge. Actually one of the main reasons why we filed the case was that there are serious issues of uh, data protection violations where individuals consent was not sought at the time when this data was being collected. In fact you will realize a lot of them were minors who were not even able to give consent and did not understand the situation that they were being involved in. Uh, the average age of these um, double registered individuals is between 23 and 35, which, is, which means that when they were being double registered, when they were being registered in the refugee database, they were about 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and they could not have given consent. The head of Haki Nashiria Initiative, Yusuf Bashir, explains the urgency of the matter. They have been waiting for the longest time and the government hasn't demonstrated um, uh, the necessary urgency to resolve this issue. For example, in the latest uh, response that was given by the Ministry of Interior, they said that they are willing to, res to resolve this issue. However, it is COVID that is uh, delaying this issue, um, which we find is very, very disingenuous because um, COVID was not there in 2019 when this issue was, uh, when they were being vetted and promises were being made. And COVID is a very dangerous uh, excuse to give uh, because we don't know how long this uh, global pandemic situation will continue. And this is why Hakina Nashere decided um, let this matter be resolved uh, by the courts. And hopefully, if the government is willing to listen and, and uh, resolve this issue before even the case is uh, determined, we are also um, happy uh, for that situation to arise and these people to get their documents. 
For thousands of people trapped in double registration, the hope of a better future can only come from having their details removed from the UNHCR refugee database and be issued with Kenyan national identity cards to be free from the bondage of statelessness and enjoy life for once like other bona fide Kenyans. The future right now looks like very dark. I am in a prison in my country, in my own country. So I don't have freedom, I am stateless within my country. There's a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering. The suffering is, uh, it's, it's dire. Mimi niliona watoto yangu wamefungwa. Niliona kabisa watoto yangu wamefungwa. Mimi niliona kabisa mafikiri mingi sana. Sometimes it is it trace our emotions. So that's a great problem to us. This is a very very sad situation and uh, it should have been resolved a long long time ago. It just requires goodwill. Uh, the president as in the past, uh, called upon uh, the bureaucrats um, in the Ministry of Interior to resolve this issue because he has noted that these people are hungry um, and they are Kenyans and they need their ideas. Uh, but up to now, since uh, those declarations have been made by the head of state, up to now, that issue is not resolved. Um, and we hope that that, that situation will be resolved.